right, so we're going to get into MMT, Modern Monetary Theory. It's been around kind of prominently and somewhat prominently. It's getting more traction, unfortunately. Over the last five years, there's a uh, professor of politics. Uh, she says economics, I believe. Her name is Stephanie Kelton at SUNY Stony Brook. She was the financial or economic advisor for Bernie Sanders in 2016. I don't know what else you need to know about that, that Bernie Sanders has picked her as her, you know, a man who's openly a communist and has been for decades. He's, it's, this goes back to the 70s. Go back and, and check out the things that he, he wrote. And he said, if you think uh, I'm just name calling, I'm not name calling. I'm actually just giving him his own description that he's lived by, as well as AOC and all these other new Marxists who are straight up admitted Marxists. They, they, they want to call things socialism, which, of course, is just a euphemism for, for Marxism, Marxism and communism. And again, these are their words. So not that I did, we didn't already know where they're going, but we're going to get into the bullet points here of actually what this is. And it's becoming a bit more prominent. And there, there is one particular factor that is a, is a good question, but we'll get into that in a little bit. So let's just go through these bullet points here so you start to understand where they're at. Now, just to give this a little bit of background. This is a bigger, a big departure from traditional or real economic theories because, again, MMT isn't really a theory. It's a political uh, attempt to just justify with a, a wrapping of professionalism, um, unending, unending uh, centralized federal central bank spending. Uh, I mean, that's what it comes down to. It's just uh, another way of manipulating uh, the people to believe that they can get a free lunch, which is you know, if you believe the free lunch, right, I, I think most people would understand that that doesn't exist. But in the past, a lot of economic theories had to do a, a, something along the lines of a budget. Even if you're breaking the budget, you know that you're go, you've are you gone too far with a budget. In other words, you have a certain intake, you have income, and then you have expenses. And the more you get out of line with the expenses relative to your income, the, the, the bigger your problems will be. For, 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 for future lending, management, paying off interest, um, perception, uh, ability to lend further, and so forth. So with that backdrop, this is completely different. So let's get into this first bullet point here. MMT is a big departure from conventional economic theory, which is what I just said. Uh, it proposes governments that control their own currency can spend freely. Okay as they can always create more money to pay off debts in their own currency. Don't you wish you could do that? The theory suggests government spending can grow the economy to its full capacity. Do you really believe government, big government can do that? Enrich the private sector. So now they're not even just helping the, the, uh, in, in the infrastructure programs and, and all the, the massive federal stun, uh, spending. They're going to help private businesses as well. Eliminate unemployment. Oh my gosh, this sounds like this sounds like heaven. Kind of sounds like communism, doesn't it? And finance major programs such as universal health care. Health care. Oh boy, talk about Freudian slip. Uh, universal health care, free college tuition, and free unending green energy. Wow, that's awesome. If the spending generates a government deficit, deficit, this isn't a problem either. The government's deficit is by definition the private sector surplus. Now, the first part of this does raise a serious good question. We've been running uh, trade deficits. We've been running uh, budget deficits for decades. And there have been a lot of gloomers and calling for the end of the Fed. And I've been one of them in the past. But they're always saying it's going to end. It's going to end. You know, everything's going to fall apart from all the government spending. Now we're seeing all this go through with the Who Cares Act and one stimulus bill after other like you haven't seen. We've never seen what's happened here in 2020 with the pandemic. And we had the whole big, uh, too big to fail going back 12 years ago during the global financial crisis. And uh, this is a legitimate question here, um, but we're gonna, we're gonna get into that a little bit. There's always a legitimate question or a, or a strain of truth somewhere. And that is then used for extreme political um, uh, gain or realism. Uh, so 
just to give some examples because this is this part here is oh well we have government spending and we can and we're spending all this money and where is the collapse where are all the, the people like the Ron Pauls and and all the, the libertarian types of which I, I tend to lean towards that way and in a general purpose we're seeing that it's going to com completely collapse now someday it might collapse but it's one of those deals hey we're gonna say it's gonna collapse and then it takes 50 years it takes 75 years it takes a hundred years I mean all fiat currencies apparently are supposed to uh, collapse within themselves and uh, most of the time that's actually true but then when it finally crashes you get to say ah see I told you so but you say hey you've been saying this forever so it doesn't really pan out this is a legitimate question a macroeconomic question that's uh, very interesting but this is the basis for wrapping this whole communist uh, paper around this uh, alleged trying to legitimize this MMT theory and the the thing about this is if you go back to communists like the Soviet communists um, they, they talked about all the the, um, the working conditions in labor unions, if you go back to uh, you know, Lenin and Marx and, and Stalin and all the ones that went into, and as um, communism spread in the first half of the last century, uh, you know, if you, certainly from our lens from today, if you look at the, of how people were treated, you can even go back further into the 1800s in the Industrial Revolution, of course, we're going to be like, yeah, that's horrible. So there's some truth there, right? But then look what how they spun it, right? They that's one of the things that they said, of course. And you know, they take these things is they always take some type of truth, something that's there that you can say is true, and then they wrap it into this extremist theory to gain control. And that's where genocide and complete slavery comes across and and is just devastating. We've seen that with Hugo Chavez if you go back 20 years ago in Venezuela, obviously there's always plenty of, you know, a high percentage of the population in, in Latin America that has the poor and he was elected. So is Hitler. He was elected and over time pushing and talking about the the poverty issues and a lot of the poverty issues are true. Well, look what's happened now, right? They brought in communism. Adolf Hitler would talk about how disproportionate number of people from the Jewish community were in the were leading the communist effort and those things are true go back and look at the history books that these these things are true they're written about by Israeli scholars I've read articles in Haaretz when when they talked about actually the number of details when they would um, talk about Bela Kuhn and other uh, you know, Jewish dictators that were genocidal because there's people of every color and background who have done these types of things. But so what did he do? It's the same thing, right? You take a couple of things that are completely true. And then in order to solve that, you come forward with some type of insane, uh, ludicrous genocide and loss of freedom and insanity. And that's what's going on here with MMT. But we need to talk about that further. Uh, increased government spending will not generate inflation. I don't know where they get that from. As long as there is unused economic capacity or unemployed labor, MMT proposes. So this is where we get into you know economic, real economic theories on inflation and all that, and they they just don't always they don't always stand up, right? There's a lot of math and historical evidence and data for how inflation can occur or when it did or deflation or stagnation or what brings up unemployment or when you need to change interest rates and then again there's a whole lot of it is art and other things that just don't make sense let's be honest right now we're in December we're having a boom in the stock market that's been going on for a couple of months and considering well, at least with the indexes, right? I mean, different sectors were hit, uh, like energy and travel and industry. They, those all lost a ton. Luckily, I bought in on them when they went down to crapper in uh, March. But they've actually bounced back now, and we'll see how long that happens. Now, theoretically, this doesn't make sense if you look at the S&P 500 or the top 2,000 or the Dow Jones. This 
everyone keeps saying this is going to be a bubble. They don't know. It's not making sense in terms of traditional. So um, it is only when an economy hits physical or natural constraints on its productivity, such as full employment, that inflation happens. Well, we already know that that's not true. MMT proponents argue governments can control inflation by spending less or withdrawing money from the economy through taxes. Huge, huge part here. And considering that this is a you know a leftist monetary theory, this just this is something that we need to talk about a lot more. Even though people like Bernie will go around saying they, they still give this phony impression that when you tax the rich, somehow this money it's gonna be all held together and then it's gonna it's gonna go from the rich part of town and it's gonna be travel get on, a, on some trucks and load it up and we're gonna drive across town into the poor neighborhood and it's literally it's not going to anybody else and it's gonna go to the poor and I, I hope there's this impression that's been this way forever okay there's no such thing as Robin Hood it's fake it's as fake as CNN or this entire hoax Okay, it doesn't work that way. And at least this part here is like, okay, this is how we're going to help control inflation. We're just going to tax people. You know, the point of this here is taxes or as taxes increase, they're, they're, at this point where we're at psychologically, um, not psychologically, ideologically, well, psychologically too, with this huge movement towards, you know, Marxism in this country that... Um, the primary reason that we're pushing for, for higher taxes, it, it's not going to the poor. It never, it never has and it never will, right? It's really just punitive because this isn't going to work either. You're going to tax the, somehow you think you can, that taxes are enough when you're talking trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars through surpluses that somehow taxing people above 400K is going to be so much that's going to suck suck huge percentages of the of money out of the money supply to help bring inflation down. I mean, come on. That's pretty stupid. The only thing I like about this is that it's it's kind of getting a couple of steps closer to the truth that taxes are just punitive. They don't go to the poor. They don't even really help uh, even governments. In fact, there's a lot of problems with taxes that don't make sense if you actually follow the MMT. Needless to say, traditional economists, econom, economists, economists, wow, okay, I need another coffee, have some issues with all of this. Just furthermore, MMT argues that by insisting the government rein in its spending to balance its books, we're hobbling ourselves. Okay, I mean, just think about this. Can you imagine any type of institution that can just print as unlimited amounts of money? It can just print whatever it wants. It can go for whatever uh, programs it wants. The whole point of this from the leftist point of view is that all the, as long as you have to have even some semblance or thoughts of, a, of you know, balancing a budget we don't we're never going to have a balanced budget but that there needs to be some type of offset that we need to have in the back of our head certain things the way a real business operates that uh i i can owe more than i'm bringing in but there's a certain point of no return where you have a loss of liquidity solvency and you'll you'll crash and burn and you know obviously that's what's happened to those who didn't have enough cash earlier in those struggling uh, sectors like energy and uh, retail and travel industry, if you know Hertz, Hertz is an example. There's others in the oil industry who are already over leveraged, and we get into a pandemic and everything gets shut down. They don't have enough. Um, they don't have enough cash to survive. They get downgraded, and of course, then they can't even lend any money. Uh, so, but their point here is like, we want all these government programs, and as long as we have some remnants of traditional economic theory, well, that's we're never going to get our 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 universal health care, our free college tuition, 
in our you know green energy which i don't know some some type of religion with these people uh, because the money isn't there and that's let's be honest that's the whole point of mmt it's that they can do un, uh, unending centralized communist style uh spending and if they yeah so if they can do that you know we have to talk about taxes Okay, so switching here, this is this goes back to the, the central point that I mentioned earlier, that there is, uh, there is the ability to print an unbelievable amount of money and that inflation does not, does not necessarily happen, which has been a long-held belief um, with some good, very notable examples, which we'll get into, which would be Zimbabwe in the 90s and 2000s and Weimar Republic when uh, their, those respective governments printed unending amounts of money. Uh, so here's one currently for Japan is currently running a government debt of close to 240% of GDP and has not experienced runaway inflation. Right. Uh, this is true. The deficit implies that the government has spent a sum vastly greater than the entire value of the Japanese economy, but has not been able to take in enough tax revenue to cover that expenditure, and is thus floating it with debt. Uh, Japan isn't alone. The U.S. Fed has forced to lower interest rates close to zero in order to counter deflation in the U.S. while Bernanke was adding a trillion, so this is a while back to U.S. bank accounts. Many economists predicted that the Fed's ballooning cash creation would beggar the dollar, but it didn't happen. Same thing here in Europe, and same thing right now with all the stimulus that's been going on for the pandemic, the Who Cares Act, and one surplus um, stimulus bill after the other, where's the inflation? So MMT theorists are, argue that mere money creation on its own cannot be the cause of inflation. It must be something else. So this does raise that an interesting point. Um, we go into Zimbabwe. Mugabe forced white farmers off the land and gave their farms to uh, his fellow uh, black soldiers. And they didn't know what the hell they were doing. And literally in a couple of months, the... the um, country was largely starving yeah, sorry but you deserve it but that's a whole other story estimates vary but Zimbabwe went from being uh, the food exporting bread basket to to starving so agriculture was the backbone destroyed in a very short amount of time from 60 percent so what there this guy's um, Bill Mitchell is a proponent of MMT so we have examples where Zimbabwe and the German Republic printed untold amounts of doll, uh, uh, cash and inflation occurred, big time inflation, like hyperinflation. And then there's other times like recently with the ECB in Europe and what we've been doing ourselves really over the last 12 years, of course, it, it it lessened uh, a number of years ago, and it's only picked up here in 2020 because of uh, everything that's gone down with the uh, government forcing people to, to stay at home. But we don't have real expected inflation now. Of course, it's supposed to take so many quarters before you see that. But I think the expectation is we're not going to be seeing anything hyperbolic, and I would. My, I would agree with that as a predict as a prediction or an expectation. So, but the proponents of MMT say, of course, it is. If you keep spending and you can't produce goods to meet that spending, you'll get inflation. Uh, and if you keep spending on top of that, you'll get hyperinflation. So now we're getting really into the crux of their argument. So in World War Two. Uh, the war had destroyed Germany's productive, uh, I said World War II, World War I, I meant productive capacity, but the Allies were insisting it, it, meaning Germany, pay reparations 
far in excess of the ability of the shattered German economy to pay. So the government printed money. They printed a lot of money. When a lack of productive supply met demand from excess cash, that's when the hyperinflation was the result. So it is the lack of goods or labor or capacity along with excessive spending that triggers inflation, MMT argues. Now, I think this is an interesting theory in and of itself. And this is the, the little nugget that's within MMT. But again, as I explained before, there's always a little grain or a couple of grains of truth with Stalin and Hitler and Mao and Chavez and Castro. And then it's really what everything is underneath that or above that, however you want to look at it, in terms of their plan for fixing the issue, which is where the disaster is. Furthermore, on that point, that's why there was no inflation in the West in the last 10 years. All that extra money from the Fed and the ECB was put to use, making the recession slightly less awful than it could have been. Yeah, it was, it was a pretty bad recession. There are still people without jobs and plenty of unused capacity. So MMT says, why doesn't the government increase spending until there is no more unemployment? A country could supply free college. This is where the insanity goes. So I don't know where you go from a legitimate question, but when we're talking about economics, nothing's 100%, right? I mean, it's almost like talking about sociology or even political movements. Um, you know, the political movements that are going on right now over the last decade or two since in this new millennia, people still talk of, uh, you know, traditional communists and they talk about fascism and stuff like that, but it's, um, they've actually warped and they've changed and many things have flipped. A lot of people on, who are pro-Trumpers are actually been anti-war and more freedom and Things that were more, you know, at least in recent years, you know, called right wing neocons, you're going to get more right neo, more right wing neocon coming out of out of Biden administration for sure. That the wars and stuff are going to are going to kick up. You know, Trump didn't have any new new wars here. Hopefully, he's going to pull the troops out wherever we're at in the, in the next couple of weeks. Things aren't exactly the same as they were before. Is what I'm getting at. But this is where it all goes haywire. So they bring up this straw man argument, which is a good one. And then somehow this turns into why doesn't the government just increase spending for, for everything? A country could supply free college education, build a green power network, which can't exist. It's bullshit. Beef up its military. Uh, we need more beefing up in our military. Build hospitals. Uh, I don't know what's the problem with the hospitals are. Uh, the, 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 the cost of, um, of uh, health insurance is a problem, but not the actual hospitals. Transport infrastructure, on and on and on and on and on. Have you heard the story before? And so here's the thing. Only when the supply of labor or stuff becomes restricted, which is never going to happen, becomes restricted, will the government find itself bidding up the price of everything? In fact, this is exactly what MMT proposes, that the government does funnel money into the, into the economy. This is as a matter of like regular recourse. This isn't even under the guise of a you know global financial real estate bust with mortgage-backed securities and big banks failing and you know, from 12 years ago, or the whole disaster of this um, Cerveza hoax that's going on. This is like, they want to do this every, all the time. So this is where it starts to break down. The existence of unemployment is clear de facto evidence that net government spending is too small. This is insane. You take, this is, the, this is why you can go into... We have a capitalist or mostly or has been mostly capitalist country. 
okay, and we've had tens of millions of people migrate here because of our financial structure of capitalism. And even with capitalism, capitalism, there's always some, you know, there's always poor people. There's, it's, there's nothing's going to be 100% perfect. And this is one of those perfect examples where they're going to say, as long as there's unemployment, well, there's always going to be unemployment. That we need to start being able to have a free, you know, a free checking book that we can just pull money off the tree that we're printing and, and just do this endlessly. So this is where everything starts to unravel because you can see the true intentions here that they're bullshit. It's just when you start basing it off of this, when you want to start being a Marxist and say, as long as there's some poor people or hanging out in parks somewhere in California, we got to bring the whole system down. Well, this again gets back to what I talked about with the other, the old dictators. It's always take a strand of truth on something, pin it up against something that will never be resolved. There's never going to be 100% unemployment. And then use that as your your uh, your springboard for your political desire of centralized, unending spending, communist style control of the in the the economy, more so than we already have now. Where whatever boundaries are there are now going to be taken away. Here you go, man. Check it out. Guaranteed jobs for everyone. When the private sector fails to provide full employment, MMT advocates support the idea of a jobs guarantee. When do you know that the government has spent enough? When the last worker has walked into a job guarantee office to pick up a job. Okay. I don't know what else you need to know that this is this is clearly just a leftist twang and fakery <laughs> to a, 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 a not even real theory of we need to just take care of everybody from our centralized planning and we're just going to spend the money and print as much as we can. Now that's just, you know, what else do you need to know about that? And and you'll see here policies deriving from MMT will be attractive politically. So there you go. It's it's a it's a push for marxism and con central control and we're going to wrap we're going to give this credence and we're going to legitimize it by calling it a real ec new theory instead of just saying we're going to give everybody free stuff. We're going to put an economic theory around it that makes it legitimate. And we're still going to give everybody free stuff. And this is why democracies eventually always fail. Don't believe that. We don't even have a democracy because we didn't even have a real election right now. But even when you vote, you have to realize a democracy is only as good as the people within it and their desire to be responsible, decent people who don't sit there and believe, um, you know, pitting one group of people against the other. Like, you know, rich versus poor and, and all the color wars that they instigate. It's going to somehow solve what's going on here and make things better. And that you're going to get a whole bunch of free crap because the other guy down the street who, who actually worked for it, who took risks, who went and got graduate degrees or started businesses, even though they had kids and took all, you know, you, you just deserve it. I and mean, if you think about how ugly this is, it's pretty disgusting. But this is where we're at. Because this is now real. And so it would be attractive politically. Yeah, it's attractive politically. If, it, if we're living in a country, and we are, where it's attractive politically to say, vote for me. I'm going to give you a whole bunch of free shit because you're a loser and you can't go do it yourself. And I'm going to go steal from the other person, even though they're not. I already explained that the rich the, 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 when they tax the rich whatever money that comes in it never goes to the poor you know you have to you have to plan right you need to think about planning ahead for where the really the West is going and you should check out other countries on on escaping that you know a couple of questions if they, if they if they can pay and print any money one obvious question is 
there shouldn't be any real need for federal taxes. How much money would that put in everybody else's hands? If you're just printing it, and you can print enough that takes care of the personal income tax, why are we paying income tax? And why are they going to push for higher income taxes when they pushing for a fake theory that says they can print whatever the hell they want? As long as there's a leftover capacity in terms of labor or goods or any other type of you know, service capacity. Why don't they answer that? Well, the answer is what I already told you. You have to realize these days because there is no, and this, you know, there's really been no budget for decades, right? It's not just, it's not just right now. It's been going on for a long time. But you, uh, there's no reason for that except that you have to understand that taxes is just about control and it's punitive. It's to beat you down. And let's just be fair, you know, on the left side, at least. You get a little lip service from the other side where they'll lower some taxes. Trump lowered the taxes. It was a couple of percentage points, which was pretty much a miracle. But the corporate income tax, he cut that thing nearly in half. That's amazing. And all that's going to go back up. But you don't need to have that to go back up if you do MMT. But why do they want to tax so many rich people? It's the politics of jealousy. It's the attractive parts of uh, attractive politically, as they point out here. And it's, just think about how sick this is. It's just to beat you down and to make you a little slave and to take your money just because you were too successful. Because it's not going to help anybody. So let me follow up with a few points here. Always good from Lou Rockwell. As they point out here, it is certainly pos possible that she, this is uh, Stephanie Kelton, who's the main, at least face, there's others, there's a lot of them that support it because it's a, it's a political movement. Like I told you, it's a political fake economic theory for unending leftist spending. And just like, like on, on, on the right side, you know, I say right, it's on the anti-left side. You've got Austrian and other, you know, other economic theories where, you know, people believe in free markets and, and low taxes. Why? Well, because they work and they're for about freedom. But I guess that's too much for other people to handle that other people can be successful. Um, but it says uh, it is certainly possible that she has a future. I, or, oh, who cares? Which is a testament to how quickly our political and cultural landscape has shifted toward left progressivism. That's what we've talked about before. And you should check out Nomad Capitalist. Um, and Henderson, and is it Andrew Henderson? In um, all the things that he talks about in terms of seeing the West go far left pretty quickly here. And left progressivism requires a quote unquote new economics to provide intellectual cover for what is essentially a political argument for painless free stuff from government, period. And this is a good summation here again, just to further drive home the MMT for what it is. Kelton's essential argument uh, consists of a couple of bullet points here. First advanced by MMT guru Warren Mosler in the 90s. It's quite simple. Federal spending is unconstrained by revenue. Well, that's true. They've, they've been doing that. Tax, that's the part that I've mentioned before. There's always that grain of truth. Taxes function only to regulate demand and hence inflation. Uh, again, I like reading that because that just tells you that taxes are bullshit. <laughs> they're, they're, they're not for spending. They're not subsidizing, you know, the um, paying for roads and all this other stuff. They're just a means of control. I mean, let's be honest. They're first a means of control and of punishment. At this point, taxes could have served something truly different uh, many, many, many decades ago. I mean, at least more than half a century ago. And in other times, so I'm not saying it's always been like that where there, you didn't actually 
kings and rulers didn't tax and they did and they took the money and they spent it that way but you know things were different there things weren't digital there were actual coins there was gold federal borrowing functions only to regulate interest rates sovereign government treasuries can create and spend as much money as they like to stimulate growth especially when the economy is underperforming if inflation spikes, taxes can be imposed to take money out of the system. See, this is this is the this is the bullshit again, right here. <laughs> because if you want to be able to, if if inflation spikes, what does the Fed or supposedly had and has done in the past when they bring in the money through the through the reserves and the exchanges um, with this with the other main commercial banks, they delete the money. They don't have to tax. They can bring that money in there through through interest. And when that money comes in, they just wipe it off their balance sheet. Why do you have to tax? Well, again, it's we already explained that. So I've already gone gone through a lot of the details here enough. I will send a link of this Lou Rockwell and it'll be in the description. Uh, Bob Murphy has a substantive review on there, but the MMT is not modern. Kings have used signage in currency debasement for centuries. MMT is not monetary. Well, that's certainly true. Its roots predate the U.S. Federal Reserve Bank and, in fact, predate the present notion of monetary policy. MMT, MM, MMT finds origins in early 20th century Charlottism, whose proponents opposed gold in favor of paper money issued by government and mandated as legal tender. That's just so they can manipulate and control you. That's the point. And, and now they're taking it a further step to get all the good as they want, to keep themselves in power, to vote on jealousy, and to put through... Um, programs that they know are very very difficult to get done if they if they're done properly in a fiscally responsible way and one last thing here uh, MMT is not a theory I've already covered that it says it is accounting this is unbelievably BS from this in fact it relies on accounting subterfuge which bizarrely claims government deficits represent private surpluses <laughs> How do you, where do you, what rabbit from what hat are you getting that from? As this goes on, because government is the font from which currency springs, all financial assets denominated in that currency of issue exists thanks to the government. Thus, under quote unquote national accounting, the more government spends, the richer we, the people, get. When tax revenue is $100, but government spends $120, Americans are richer by 20 bucks, and so on. This is not a theory. This is accounting mimicry. I don't even know if you'd call that accounting. Don't you just call it fraud? Let's put it this way. Could they get through Sarbanes-Oxley with this? Or would the Fed come after them and arrest their ass? Well, you know, we know what would happen. Um... But it, it, when it's government, it's okay to steal. And we'll just finish up here. In the relentlessly circular world of MMT, government is the source of all finance. And in fact, wealth. Taxpayers don't fund government. Because after all, government first provides the tokens taxpayers need to pay the IRS bills. Government funds taxpayers, which is broadly speaking what the American left already really believes. And with that, we're going to wrap it up. I'll put this uh, link as well as Bob Murphy's link to uh, in the description notes and realize that this is this is happening. Right now, this part here even gets into the amount of spending that's happened between Congress and the Trump administration. Uh, it happened during the, the Bush into the Obama. So this isn't, this part, the unending spending is a, a complete federal government.
catastrophe that uh, both parties are actually taking taking part in. But okay, until next time, be seeing you.